right, so this is my third time recording this. I want you to know how much I love you all, and I'm doing this a third time. hope this is the last time. This is the Machinery Hill Crit Series, night number 8, I think. Uh, June 11th, 2019. I'm racing for Midtown. You can see the guys in the Midtown kits in front of me. We're all uh, racing for the same team. I got that strange green and black on too. Alright, let me just uh, skip ahead to when the race actually starts. Alright, here we go. So first thing I like to do in race is uh, make sure I'm up front but not eating wind. Also taking a good look at who's jumping hard out of the first few corners, because that might mean that they're feeling fresh. You can see these three guys from Loon State at the front. Um, Loon State is currently dominating the team leaderboard for this crit series, which means that they're placing in all categories. This is the Cat 4-5, so it's the beginners, but these guys are really strong. They're definitely the team to watch out for in this race. And there's this other guy named uh, Aaron Wilson, I think? And uh, I've spent a bit of time in a breakaway with him in another race, so I know that he's not afraid to dig deep to get something to stick, and he's got a pretty good uh, kick. Um, so we're just going around the hairpin of the course. It's a little sketchy because uh, some of the wet plant matter on the inside, but honestly it's otherwise fine. The tricky part is making sure that you don't end up with uh, someone's wheel that's not going to carry speed through the corner so that you end up having to jump really hard to get out of it. Um, and then right after the hairpin is this little hill. Um, so it burns double here if you hit that turn wrong. And so you had to accelerate and then you have to punch up this hill. Uh, I know that this is a double whammy, so I'm going to use this spot to attack later, punish the people who aren't hitting that corner well. You can see Steve kind of goes here, so maybe he had the, the same thought. You know, so I just hop on this Loon State guy's wheel and get a solid draft, you know, I'm putting out some good bots here, we're just, uh, just accelerating, getting up to cruising speed. So in this race they're calling uh, Ninja Preems, uh, so you don't know when it's a Ninja Preem, and so everybody's just sprinting for just about every finish. Uh, not on this first lap though, you'll see that everybody just kind of rolls across the line, they just let, uh, let Steve go ahead and have it. Um, we're just, uh, just taking it easy through here. Um, a little wet. It was raining earlier. So happy that it uh, dried off for the race. The sun actually comes out halfway through the race, which is always, always nice. And I'm just going to jump ahead to uh, when the action starts. Alright, here we go for the second lap. You can see I want that Ninja Cream. I want some beer, maybe some headphones, I forget what the prizes were. Um, and I just barely don't make it across the line before Steve. I should have probably grabbed a draft from them, but I wasn't really sure how hard they were going to push, if they were going to take that that lap seriously, and so I just, uh, yeah, I just didn't, didn't push too hard, let them have it. So now I'm just chilling at a recovery pace but I noticed that I've got a pretty big gap behind me, and so I start digging in here. Seems like everyone sat up after crossing the line. So I'm sure this is, I'm doomed to get wheeled in, but I want to make sure that the Loon State guys chase and give my teammates a rest. I just talked to Chris about counterattacking before the race, so I figured he might be ready to go soon. And you can see that I kind of shut it down in this headwind section. Um, but I'm still holding 28, 27 miles per hour coming into this hairpin. My hope here is to get a nice clean corner so I don't have to re-accelerate re too much. You can just barely see the back of the pack hitting that corner. They're about four seconds behind me, but they're still in the wind. I want them to have to put in a good dig to get back to me so you can see I'm putting a little bit of power on again. Uh, but I'm looking at this hill and thinking that this would be a prime opportunity to sag climb and deposit myself in, in the pack, and so I'm slowing down here. Taking it nice and easy, waiting for people to come around. And Steve jumps around me on the left. Now, this is confusing to me because I didn't expect to see Steve come up to me first. You know, I wonder if he was pulling that group back up to me. Um, that's going to be a little bit of a theme of this video, is me wondering why Steve is the first person to come around me whenever I do a little flyer. So 
So I'm thinking about that interpreme again. I want to be close to the front, but not on the front. And so this is pretty good. I don't mind third wheel for, for this kind of sprint. Looks like Steve has given us a great lead out. All I have to do is hold on to this wheel, come around when I'm ready. And that final stretch. Here comes the acceleration. Steve pulls to the side. Make sure this guy gets into the wind. I'm still getting my nice draft. Going 30 miles per hour and I hadn't even jumped yet. I couldn't lose that, so here I go and just go right past Steve. Get the line. You hear me laughing there. Here I'm yelling at Steve, telling them that we've got a gap. I want him to jump onto my wheel. In hindsight, I think he was a little bit cooked from that long lead out. But at the time, I figured he had li likes to spare. Steve's a strong guy. So I keep it moderately hard, waiting for him to catch on, keep looking back at him. You know, it's about now that I start realizing that Steve's probably not going to make it. So I take my turn nice and easy. That's my goal. Looking at that hairpin. I really want to take speed through that so I don't have to jump out of it on the other side. And manage 17 miles per hour. 16? Oh, that's not very good. I was hoping to hold 17 there. That seems to be the number of the day. So I'm just waiting for the group to catch on to me. Do my sand climb. Steve and I have a few words about racing for the Ninja Preems. I'm telling him that I had the inertia. I could have let Steve have it, but I don't know. What if another guy would have jumped around? Oh, and there goes Chris. Yeah, and that was perfect timing. Everybody had just gone up that hill. They got their double whammy. You know, because he's off the front, I get to sit in a good draft. These guys just sit up. They may not realize that Chris is a really good time trialist. And he might have stuck this if he goes all out on the attack. Um, but he does uh, shut it down after a little bit. Like, look at this, I'm just noodling. You know, nice and easy. This is just perfect for me. And Steve actually asked me, like, should we catch him? No, don't pull them up. You know, let somebody else do the work in the wind. I don't like the idea of attacking off the front anyway. But someone's about to realize that Chris is making more ground. Yep, there he goes. So Aaron Olsen is now shooting off of the front. And I like this situation. Um, you know, like I just get to sit in. Chris is up the road. I'm not going to chase him. Here, I wish that, like, so you can see Steve is actually pulling the group here. I think he should have just sat in and let some of the Loon State guys chase. I actually like the idea of letting Aaron bridge up to Chris because I think that they would have had a good chance for a race winning move. Um, you can see Aaron and Chris are way up the road there. Aaron's making good progress to catch on to him. He's almost on. I suspect that Chris is pulling back at this point and there's Steve dragging everybody up to everybody up to Chris. You can see right here that we're about to catch Chris and Aaron. So I'm starting to think about my windup. I want to pass the leaders right as they're suffering on the hill. My counterattack. Uh, this is so perfect. Everybody's all spread out. The elastic is stretched. Yeah. And I know everybody's going to sit up here. They're just slowing down right as I come around them. And you can see Chris and Aaron there sitting up. Tell Chris nice work as I go by, waging my counterattack. I 
invisible arrow bars here. Little lens wipe for the viewers, just making sure there's none of that crud from the side of the road on there. So much I love you. I'm basically eating the camera in that position, so it's easy to remember it's there. Basically, forget that there's a camera on my bike for most of the race. I hope you can hear it, but I'm breathing pretty hard right here. No big deal though, I can hold about threshold and expect that that'll come down a little bit. Just trying to hold that threshold, high tempo, maintain my gap for a bit, you know, get across the line first, you know, just in case it's a ninja pre. You can see the card back there where it had to go. So we're well into the race. So I'm just going to jump ahead here to where I get caught. Sit here and listen to me breathe. Okay, so I'm on the hill doing my sag climb. Here comes Steve. Hopefully not pulling. Who knows? You know, these guys sit on my wheel and I'm just going to soft pedal. And like, I'm not going, you guys. I'm not chasing my team. And you go around, you go chase them. And get on your wheel. That's how this is going to work. And again, I'm thinking about that ninja cream. I want to be towards the front, but not on the front. Then Steve is putting in, a, putting in a good pace. Not too hard, though. You know, last time we came through here with Steve on the front, we were going like 25. Now we're going just 22. And I'm still getting a good rest here. Breathe in, heart rate's coming down. Steve tries to go again. Staying in the draft, getting on the wheel. Going 30 miles an hour. Still haven't jumped. See this guy look back and sit up, so it's time to jump. 1,000 watts. And get across the line first. That was great. You know, that was that was what I how I wanted to work. You know, we got a lead out, can hang on somebody's wheel, jump around them right before the line. That was some good teamwork there. Now, I'm not going for the flyer this time. I need a bit of rest. I just came off the front. You know, but I look back and I see that there's a huge gap and my heart rate is actually kind of low, so what the hell? Let's just go. Why not? Let's just put in another day. Why not get a work, good workout if you're, if you're going to be racing Cat 5 anyway, you might as well get a good workout. It's fun to race with a lot of teammates like this. You can play around with team tactics. I like that. Probably not the smartest way to race, but I want my beer green. So we're getting up to some lap craft here. Calling out to them, letting them know that I'm coming up on them and they pull over to the side like pros. It's great. Good work there. Yeah, so I just decided that I'm, gonna, I'm not going to wait for people on this hill. I want to make them suffer. And so I'm digging in. Getting my invisible arrow bars going on, punching it up to a uh, threshold, getting out of the saddle and climbing up, punching up this hill. I swear to God, if Steve is the first person to come around me after this one. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear this in the audio, but I'm breathing hard. Just ragged. But whatever, you know, keep the power on. If I'm breathing hard, then whoever's behind me is breathing hard. Better not be Steve. Steve better be getting a really good draft at this point. And somebody else chase me down. Now I'm starting to look back and see that the, the field is gaining on me. My hypoxic state, I can't remember if Steve was on the front. Um, but I do a, do a little dig here just to make sure that um, make sure that I cross the finish line first, that whoever's on the front is going to have to do some work. They're not going to jump around me right at the end. Got to get that beer cream. 
And now I am super ready for a rest. Oh man, I am just wrecked. That was like, I think, three minutes at VO2 max, upper threshold. It's a good push. So Steve's not the first person to come around me, that's what I want to see. The benefit of the doubt, hope he wasn't chasing any of that time. I want to let I want to let lots of people come around here so that I can get a good long rest in, get a really good draft. I see Aaron Olson on my left in the red there. I know that he's a strong rider, and so I want to jump on his wheel. So I put a couple hard pedal strokes here to make sure that I get in, and then just sit in. I'm just like barely pedaling in this section. It's perfect. Get that heart rate to come down. And I don't like this dive inside here by Loon State. I feel like that was kind of sketchy. You know, it ended up pushing me way to the outside in this corner. You know, he comes way to the outside again. Yeah, it slowed me down quite a bit, 50 miles per hour. I gotta, I gotta go back and show you guys another thing that happened in this corner. So watch this guy in the black kit in front. He rips his foot out of the pedal and it almost falls down. He actually kicks the ground. So not only does he keep it upright, but he pulls off to the right side to make sure he's not in anybody's way. That was good work. Uh, that was that was solid save. We go surging up this hill. Everybody should be feeling a little tired at this point. I don't see Steve at the front, that's good. Everybody calms down a little bit, so we don't have Steve pulling for us. So I'm thinking about that pre, I'm not quite recovered, still kind of breathing ragged. Not quite in the position that I want to be in, but you know, I'm getting a really good draft, so maybe I can let this, let this lap go. here I'm starting to feel a little bit better so what the hell let's just go for it so I'm staying as close as I can to people as I come up on the right get my little half draft from them see Steve lighting it up on the left but I've got legs so I just go thousand watts there we go Cross the finish line start finish whatever So we're wasting energy with two laps to go. It's probably not the smartest idea, um, especially after I just did that dig, but whatever, it's fun. Steve's cursing at me right here. You can just barely hear him. It's like right on my wheel, cursing under his breath. Comes up beside me up here and tells me if we work together, we might actually win. I know. But I want that beer. Shakes his head at me. Like you do. Alright. So in this last couple laps, the things get boring as everybody's sort of sitting in and preparing for that field sprint. So I'm gonna jump ahead here. So this is the uh, second to last lap. Someone's looking for that, uh, looking for that beer pre, so they're gonna jump around us for right in a second. I'm just sitting in for this one. I feel like I've I've had enough. I want to save that sprint for the the final lap. There he goes on the left, and Steve jumps up on him. And that was a good jump that Steve does here. I, I like it. He makes a little separation. People don't really feel like chasing him, you know, and these guys come in from either side and they try to steal my teammate's wheel. This is Lee in front of me, and I don't, I don't want to let him, so we're bumping elbows there. I want Lee's wheel, for sure. Um, you know, now that I think about it, that guy might have been trying for a last lap flyer. I see Steve hopped onto the front. Um, he's pulling, but not too hard. Let's him come back around again. 
See, this is a good situation for me. You know, I don't, I don't want Lee here pulling on the front. I wish Lee would have shut it down and let somebody else try and catch these two guys. Um, but what are you gonna do? It's okay. It's the last lap. I don't like this move here. This guy comes way from the right. I actually locked up my back wheel just to slow down enough so they didn't take out my front wheel. Oh man, that'll get your adrenaline going. But I want my heart rate to be way down here. It's a way too high. Because I need all that energy for that last approach. I know it's going to get really fast at this hairpin. Get pushed way out here. See that Steven the rider had a bit of a gap, and I'm feeling pretty good here after the hairpin, so I give it a good jump. You can kind of see in the shadow in front of me here. I'm looking down to make sure that there is nobody on my wheel. I don't want to pull anybody up to him. I want to join these guys. Yeah, this is a this is a pretty solid position. Steve is in a good position too. You know, Steve should actually go right now. That's his, that's his timing. He put in a really good one minute effort. He might have been able to hold us all off. Um, but he might be, he might be a little cooked at this point. Yeah. But he decides to wind it up a little bit. Not a real jump, just a, just a few more watts. You know, and I'm not going to file in behind Steve. I want to, I want to let this guy jump in there. I don't want to be that close to the front. Second to last turn. And there he goes. This guy winds up an early sprint. This is perfect for me. You know, getting a little bit extra speed coming up to this last corner, and boom, light it up. And so I look behind me just as I start this sprint, and there's nobody on my wheel. But I can see that Aaron Olson is back there, and he's uh, he's putting in a pretty good dig too. So he's just starting to come up to me. He's maybe a bike length behind me, and gets a little bit up to my side, but I get him by half a bike length, and I am winded. That was one of the hardest crits that I've ever raced. Probably because I raced it like an idiot. But it was fun. Got my beer too. <laughs>